Hey friends! Welcome to my channel. My name is Kay Ramos and I'm back! <laughs> it's been a while since I filmed a YouTube video, but here I am. So today I am diving into a topic that's deeply personal and really close to my heart. So I want to share with you guys why I quit or why I step away from Christian journaling and everything about it. Like, where have I been? <laughs> so grab a cup of tea, milk, water, coffee, whatever it is, and let's have a heartfelt chat, shall we? So if you've followed my journey or like um, you've seen some of my videos or if you look at my previous videos, you might remember or notice that Christian journaling used to be a big part of my life. Like it was my way of connecting with my faith, um, capturing my thoughts and basically seeking guidance from God. You know, I've journaled for a long time, but I stopped. I quit. Um, I took a break. <laughs> As um, Life has its twists and turns and there were a few reasons that led me to pause my Christian journaling practice. But the ultimate reason is time and energy level. So after becoming a mom, uh, the busyness of life took over, let's just be honest. And unfortunately, my Christian journaling took a backseat. So I found myself in a spot where um, I am trying to navigate this new territory without much physical support around me. And I couldn't seem to find the balance to include um, an alone time for myself. And when I say alone time, it's the quiet time I used to have. So alongside with that, I found myself questioning aspects of my faith, which, you know, made me hesitant to document my thoughts and my feelings. Um, since I journaled consistently in the past before, if you look at my videos, I've shared quite a few about spending time with God daily. So when I didn't have a baby, I journaled consistently. I spent time with God in the Word daily. And because I couldn't do the same thing anymore, I felt def defeated that I couldn't do the same thing. So I developed this mentality that if I cannot do it the same way like I used to do it before, then might as well not do it at all. But if you really look into it, in reality, it became more of an excuse not to try again. So there were also times when I felt so distant from my spirituality, making it difficult to find the words to journal honestly or even to talk to God at times. So I actually feel ashamed <laughs> admitting it because my channel revolves around it. And it's basically a journey of my faith. If you look at my previous videos, especially the beginning part or the first part of my videos, that's all I talked about. I talk about prayer journaling. It's basically a journey of my Christian faith. So whatever I was learning at that time, that was what I was sharing. Um, that's why if you notice or if you look right now, I stopped doing YouTube videos because I feel like I am not going to be authentic if I share something when clearly I am struggling inside. So I even came to a point where like, oh my gosh, I just want to delete my entire channel because this used to be my life and I'm craving to have that lifestyle again, but I can't have it. So I, again, I came to a I. Eh. So I came to a point where I'm like, I'm done, done, done. Let's just delete this channel because it just makes me remember my great times with God. It's ironic because I should be encouraged by that, right? I should be encouraged if I see those videos, but it's quite the opposite. And I'm like jealous of my previous self that I cannot have those moments like I used to have. But, you know, with, with the encouragement of my husband saying, oh, no, please don't delete it. It's our daughter would probably see this someday and she would be thankful or inspired by your videos. And also, I would like to thank my friend Lisa, <laughs> who I met here on YouTube. And she's basically the person who encouraged me years ago to do YouTube. And now she did the same thing. Like she tried to hunt me down. Like I was out of nowhere. I didn't become a good friend. And she tried to reach out to me in several places. And that's 
I believe that's like she's a God sent. Like God sends you a certain person to wake you up sometimes from like the monotony of life and basically there's a, a, a Bible character there like Nathan. She's my Nathan telling me like, hey, you need to get up and do something about your faith. So thank you, Lisa. You're absolutely the like best, best friend ever. Anyway, so one of the main reasons also why I stopped prayer journaling because I have this prayer that I have been praying for a long time, for years, probably minimum of seven years. I have journaled it for that long time and every time I open my prayer journals, that prayer is there. So when I revisit my prayer journals, I'm like, why is God not answering this prayer? Does He even listen? Does He even care? So I I developed this negative feelings inside me that mm, God is not paying attention to me. But in actuality, I have so many blessings I have to be thankful for. And that particular prayer just steals all the energy, all the goodness that God has shown me. So I am being vulnerable here. And that's one of the reasons I became a lukewarm Christian lately. I didn't do my daily quiet time consistently i didn't journal i didn't do my prayer journal i would pray i would read the bible but it's more of like a to-do list so my heart is not really motivated or inspired to do it let's just be honest here but i know that within me i am craving for that connection once again i am craving for my daily conversations with god i am craving for that quietness where i could just pour my heart out and just write my letters to him and recently something incredibly moving happened that really sparked my desire to return to christian journaling um i mentioned seeing this same prayer over and over again it's not yet answered but at the same time when i revisited some of my old journals i stumbled upon an old journal where i had poured my heart out in the past it's very raw and reading those pages reminded me of the genuine connection i used to have with god i used to have with my faith and how much it helped me navigate through different challenges and trials so it's basically seeing my old self and how much i have grown anyway the point is i stopped christian journaling because i because there is this one prayer that's not been answered up to now but i know it's time to get up it's time to do something about it and now i'm ready to to Christian journaling again so now I'm so excited to get back to my Christian journaling journey and um, here are the reasons why I'm coming back so first is to find purpose so returning to Christian journaling feels like coming home oh my goodness it's a way for me to seek purpose find answers and strengthen my relationship with God so it's basically saying God here I am like I'm the prodigal son please accept me once again and the second reason is journaling helps me navigate challenges so life's uncertainties left me feeling lost sometimes and I realized that Christian journaling could be my compass again to help me navigate through ups and downs because when I journal, I write Bible verses that resonate with me during my Bible reading. I put, I brain dump. I put all my thoughts there that I could write at that moment. So it's kind of putting all these abstract thoughts in my mind and putting them down on paper. It's so helpful. Third is for personal growth. So looking back at my journal, I saw my growth and resilience. So even though there were so many prayers that have not been answered, I still uh, there st uh, there are evidences or documents that God was there along the way, that God was there all throughout the journey. So there were moments of celebrating my progress, moments of learning from setbacks and failures, everything. It's a documentation of my personal growth. 
Fourth is to connect with my community. So I know I'm not alone with this journey and by sharing my experiences, I hope to connect with others who might be going through similar struggles. So maybe it's not prayer journaling or it's not Christian journaling. Maybe you have stepped away from your faith and you want to get back right now. And I am here. Like I, we could be accountability partners. I mean, I cannot text you or email you like oh do these things but showing up every week through a video might be helpful that's why i'm excited um, to be launching series of videos here in, on youtube where we both could join all together so basically i will be giving a prompt that you guys can use and i'll guide you in the process so we're gonna do it in real it's not really real time, but there's going to be a guide from me. I would mention a prompt and I would give you like guidance on how to do it. And then there will be a calm background music so you could journal at that time. Like you could pause the video if you want, if you need some more time to write down your thoughts and then you could continue. So it's, it's, it could be a real time and you could pause and play as you go. So anyway, if that's something that might interest you, please hit that um, like, subscribe, and bell button so, so you won't miss it and you will be notified when it, you know, it's live. Now that I have shared my reasons, let's talk about my plan to revive my Christian journaling practice and the strategies that I have in place. My first strategy is to start afresh. So I am going to approach this journey with an open heart and willingness to explore my faith with new eyes. So basically, I will not compare my current setup with my setup from previous years. Because hey, I am in a different season right now. I think that's a very important aspect to take note. Uh, we have to honor the season we are in right now when we're doing something, whether you're doing a hobby, like working, whatever. We can't keep trying to do what we used to do because as mentioned in Ecclesiastes, there is a time and season for everything. My second strategy is to decide on the journal size. So just a friendly reminder, if you want to do this journaling, Christian journaling sessions with me, you can journal in any notebook you want. There are so many journals, especially with back to school sales right now. As of this recording, there are so many journals. But to be honest, I'm actually being hit by analysis paralysis again because I'm so excited to get back to journaling. I'm so inspired. I've searched some journals and now I cannot decide on the journal that I want. So, just a friendly reminder not to overcomplicate this process. But um, I have some few considerations in mind uh, when choosing my journals this time. So, I want to use something that will really inspire me to hold and to bring it and basically write on it or to use it. Now, inspires a vague word, like what really inspires me? So few things I considered. First, I want it to be small enough that I can bring it anywhere like parks, play dates, um, nature centers, because my daughter loves playing outside. She loves being in nature. She could go on for hours and hours playing. Sometimes I'm just staring at her. So it would be great if I have a small journal I could put in my purse, you know. So if she's busy, I could be busy writing down my thoughts also. Second, I want it to have a lovely feel that I could treat it as my own. So I don't know if that even makes sense. <laughs> so in the past, like I said, I just use simple notebooks. But you know what? Today... Your girl is craving for a more creative journal. I got inspired by my friend Lisa when she made me a junk prayer journal. This one right here. So pretty, right? So pretty. I cannot open it because there are so many journal entries here. So um, this is what you call junk prayer journal. She has a YouTube channel. You guys should check it out. She shares some lovely stuff on how to do your own junk 
prayer journal or different kinds of journal and she sometimes gives giveaways so you guys should check her out so journal okay anyway so while i cannot do something similar with what she's doing i drew some insights from her journals or from the journal that she gave me and i kind of want something that's same size maybe something smaller so i actually bought two travelers notebook i didn't know there are different sizes for travelers notebook so this one is a standard size and i realized when it came i realized it's too big um i can't just shove it in my purse and like oh let's go it's too big but i'm gonna keep it because um, I bought it mostly because of the devotional aspect. So um, many of the devotional journals I see online, they're actually in the standard size traveler's notebook size. I don't know how many sizes did I mention. Um, I will write it down what size is this. So if you are familiar with By the Well for God, they have so many devotional journals. They're so cute and lovely if you're like, crafty and creative go check those out and this is the size sizes they have but i also bought a second one this one is a lot smaller this is passport size it's not actually a passport size because i just pick picked it randomly but the inserts that you could put inside would be passport size so i like that it's a binder type i'll open it up sorry okay i like that it's a binder type um so i can use whatever paper i have at home and i won't be restricted on a certain insert because i know some like um by the way guys i didn't know that traveler's notebook could be really expensive but this one is it's this one is really cheap and affordable so it doesn't have fancy things like um pockets but it's good for a starter right so uh, again i like that it's a binder type so i can use whatever paper i have at home i could just recycle paper and i don't have to like search high and low for a specific insert in short, this standard size will be used at home for more serious journaling like devotion, scripture writing, um, prayer journaling like my regular prayer journaling. Uh, this would be more of like a war binder. By the way, guys, if you don't know what a war binder is, I have several videos. You guys could check them out. But this passport size will be my go-to journal and it will be inside the bag of my little kid or like inside my purse so that i can journal when she's busy playing outside my fourth strategy is to have journaling prompts now this is one of the most important aspects of my christian journaling right now because i realized that there were times where i found that the routine became so repetitive like i was just basically writing down the same things or same prayers but now I prepare journaling prompts that can help me jumpstart my thought process. So I have um, the first set here. I have the first set here called from, from distraction to devotion, inviting God into every moment. So it has 30 prayer journaling prompts and it's basically prompts related to prayer so they're very thought provoking so if you feel like if you feel like stagnant in your prayer life they're a great way to inspire you to think beyond your usual prayer routine so i made 30 so if i want to journal once a day to form a habit then i can do that i could also like answer one to three questions per day depending on you know the availability of my time and of course depending on my mood so if you are interested in this prayer journaling prompt cards they are available in my shop and there are different topics to cover like prayer 
Um, setting up your prayer routine. I have another one here. Setting up your prayer routine or prayer ritual. So this one is from intentions to action. So it's basically re-establishing your prayer ritual. So these are prompts um, related to establishing your prayer life or like your daily quiet time. So this one is more of like um, actual, you have to write prayers. But this one, it will force you to think uh, about what prayer does in your life. Anyway, you guys can check out my shop. There will be some individual cards also. I like that I have cards. I have prompts from 1 to 6 because it saves me space, it saves me um, ink, and it saves me paper. So again, if you're interested, I will link it down below. So my fifth strategy is consistent commitment. So while I won't overwhelm myself with journaling for a set time, I will um, commit to regular journaling sessions in whatever place I'm in. So that would allow me to stay connected and accountable. So I'm so excited on what um, this new season has to offer. And if you've ever experienced a similar journey or if you're considering delving into christian journaling i'd love to be part of my journey like i said i have some videos coming up with journaling sessions that we guys could do together and if you're interested with that don't forget to like and subscribe and of course hit that bell button and check my journaling prompt cards you know so we could journal together so i hope that you find this video inspiring or you learned something from this video and it encourages you somehow to get uh, back with your christian faith and of course maybe we could do journal together so this is kate ramos thank you so much for watching see you guys next time and love you with the love of jesus bye bye